As a driver in the public transportation industry, the control of your vehicle and safety of passengers is of paramount importance. You carry the most valuable of cargo, people. Customer service and an unwavering commitment to safety can give your company an edge over the competition. Hi, I'm Todd Carrier with Protective Insurance Company. In this edition of Safety Solutions, we'll review best practices for customer care and passenger safety. In today's world, it seems the threats are numerous. You've seen the news reports on school shootings, violence on the bus, horrific accidents on the road. You are a professional with great responsibility. Let's explore some strategies to ensure your trip is a safe one. The Loss Prevention and Safety Department of Protective Insurance Company believes there are three key components of customer care and passenger safety, or the three P's. They are preparation, practice, and passenger control. Let's begin by explaining how preparation is important to good customer service and passenger safety. First, Review your plans daily. Prior to your trip beginning, ensure you've met all regulatory and company policies and procedures. This includes pre-trip inspections, mirror adjustments, and being well rested. If you are taking medications, be sure you are following the instructions of your prescribing physician and the notification requirements of your company. Your personal appearance matters greatly as well. First impressions go a long way. Being neatly dressed, well-groomed, polite, and courteous are pillars of great customer service. Second, be flexible. Review the details of the trip before departure and be sensitive to the needs of your passengers. Don't act irritated when someone asks for a change of plans or a request you cannot fulfill. Listening is the most important skill in human relations. Allow for some flexibility with requests, but remember, safety comes first, above all. Finally, communicate. This begins with standing outside your vehicle and greeting passengers as they board or unload. Identify the group leader to review plans and discuss expectations of everyone involved. Remember to communicate with your passengers regularly. If you do not keep people updated on all facets of the trip, they may become nervous. No one likes the unknown. This simple act of recognition can go a long way in establishing a strong professional rapport with your passengers and can be one of your best investments in reducing the potential of a violent incident on your bus. It is also very important to outline the safety features of the vehicle and expectations of passengers before you leave. Remind them to stay seated. Use seat belts and handrails as applicable. This includes proper storage of personal items and the location of fire extinguishers, emergency brake, and evacuation procedures. Speaking of emergency procedures, let's take a moment to discuss the next component of customer care and passenger safety the importance of practicing safe vehicle operation and what to do in the event of an emergency. Practice begins with your own personal driving habits. Always wear your seatbelt. There is no message more damaging to your passengers than showing you don't care about your own personal safety. Also, don't drive distracted. This includes looking at your GPS, cell phone, eating, drinking, and even distractions from passengers themselves. If people are talking excessively to you, politely inform them that you need to concentrate on driving. Follow the speed limits, allow for safe following distances, and always drive defensively. If you experience an unplanned event or emergency, regardless of how minor or severe it might be, your job is to control the scene. If possible, Always try to proceed to the nearest roadway exit, side street, or parking lot to minimize exposure to traffic. Do not leave the vehicle unless absolutely necessary, and this includes your passengers. In most situations, 
it's safest to keep everyone in the vehicle. Remember, you are responsible for passenger safety, even if they exit the bus before you reach your destination. If it's a minor unplanned event, it's still a good idea to contact your dispatch. However, if there is any possibility of an emergency that could produce bodily injury or property damage, contact proper authorities immediately by calling 911. Calling dispatch first in a true emergency will delay response time and prove to be poor judgment in subsequent investigations. When in doubt, call 911. Protect the scene if necessary by following your company procedures for breakdowns and crisis management. Begin to gather the facts and identify witnesses. Do not discuss details with anyone responding to the incident, particularly the media, until you have received instructions from dispatch or an authorized company representative. Passenger control is our final topic with customer care and passenger safety. As mentioned earlier, Passenger control techniques demand greater attention, particularly with the publicized recent events and the advent of viral social media that put you and your company at great risk. Let's first understand the threats. Threats can come from violence between passengers, such as verbal and physical assaults, unauthorized boarding from the general public, another student, or even an angry parent. Terrorism can be defined as any threat to the vehicle that could cause multiple injuries or mass casualties, such as a bomb or weapons such as knives or guns. Let me introduce Jesus Villahermosa of Crisis Reality Training to explore this topic in more detail. There's actually been quite a bit of publicized events in the media. Right. Um, can you recite some, some high-profile instances that, that have happened lately? Yeah, you know, there's been a few instances nationally uh, that have really been of great concern in the in the vehicle transportation arena. You know, and we're, when we say vehicle transportation, we're talking about you know buses, and we're talking about motor coach, we're talking about limousines, um, and so there's been some very high profile instances. The the Alabama situation, of course, uh, with uh, Charles Poland Jr., who was tragically killed trying to protect the kids on his bus. Uh, there's been the Georgia bus jacking. There's been the Arkansas bus jacking. I mean, you know, the, the casino operator who's driving his bus down the road, the motor coach operator, and, and a man stands up and starts stabbing passengers on the coach. You know, and, and what are we doing to prepare our drivers for crisis? Because we're so busy training to non-crisis. Non-crisis is not what your drivers are worried about, because that's a good day. They want to know, but what do I do if something goes wrong on my bus, on my vehicle? And that's the type of services that we provide. Yes, those are certainly horrific events, but do people still think it can't happen to me? You know, they really do, and if you look at most of the events that are happening across the country, uh, the, one of the first cuts you will get from a news crew is talking to someone who says, I, I just can't believe this happened here. And that's a consistent statement across the country, it doesn't matter where it happens. And so we really have to get companies to understand, we're not saying it's gonna happen to you. We're saying, if it happens to you, What's your plan? So you're recommending companies start with a plan. That's challenging for several folks. Where do you recommend they begin? You know, it, it is difficult to, to know where to begin, especially in this arena of violence prevention. It, it can be overwhelming for a lot of companies. And so one of the models that I like is what we call uh, I am. It's the acronym I am. Uh, identify, assess, and manage. You know, each of those components teaches employees, look, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to identify it. What's happening? What's the threat? Is it a gang situation? Is it an angry parent unauthorized boarding? Is it the casino operator, the motor coach operator who the guy boards the bus? Which of those is the situation? Because once you identify what is the potential threat, it leads us into the next component. What about assess? You know, assessing is critical because we all assess crisis differently. Uh, a lot of people like to use the term common sense. But I can tell you that there's really no such thing as common sense because common sense is only as common as to how you were trained or brought up in your life. So when we talk about assess, we want you to look at the environment. Is your bus moving? Is the limousine moving? Is it stationary? Is the motor coach parked? Where are we exactly at? What are we doing at the time? Because that all becomes part of the plan, right? The response to that. So assessing is really critical because assessing then leads us to the last component of management. So what exactly do you mean by managing a situation? 
Well, in managing, we're really talking about what are the tools now that you're going to implement for that plan, for that response. You know, the difference between a reaction and a response is that a reaction is really something more that's kind of caught you off guard. Whereas a response is specifically, wow, I, I've planned for this. I, I've actually thought about this. I've rehearsed this in my mind and I'm ready to move into this action plan. So managing is very critical to the, to the overall incident because it tells you what you're gonna do. Okay, let's explore those three phases a little bit more deeply. So on identify, what tools should a driver be using in the identification phase of a threat? Well, you know, one of the things we have to teach drivers uh, anywhere in the country is using those observation skills. They're already the best in the country at what they do, right? Their heads are on that pivot and they're moving around and they're watching for traffic and red lights and guys that are going to run it. And, but we're talking about body language indicators, for example. You know, body language doesn't lie. It's the way we communicate 55% of the time without saying a word. So for a driver to have body language training, recognition training to say, you know, something just doesn't look right here. Uh, that then feeds into what we talk about, that gut instinct. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of research on gut instinct and it says 75% of the time you've got a feeling something's wrong, something's wrong. And you should probably have a plan to do something about it. So body language is a great tool for your toolkit. But again, it can't be a tool if you haven't been trained in body language recognition. And you're saying any incident is worth reporting at least for record to dispatch. Absolutely, because you have to remember that if, let's say I see something, but I'm not sure what it is, and let's say I do nothing about it, but then it turns out to be something later. You're gonna regret that you didn't get that information at the time during non-crisis. Whereas if I see something, I see, I see this guy and he just continuously, he's at the bus stop and he's looking at the small children and I'm like, gosh, I don't recognize him as a parent and I don't recognize that car. You know, I'm gonna take down that license plate number. I'm gonna take down a description. It's easier for victims to take down a description of something during non-crisis and it be accurate than to try to do it during crisis and it's usually not accurate. Because remember that if it turns out to be nothing, if we report it, dispatch calls 911 and they, cops come out, it turns out to be Uncle Bob just came in from New York and, and he's watching the kids this week. Wow, great, nothing happened, it's awesome. Right. But what if you were right? What if it turns out to be a potential pedophile or an abduction situation and you've actually intercepted it because your gut feeling said something's just not right? Uh, we always tell people it's better to have a plan and not need it than need a plan and not have it. Let's talk about the next step a little bit more, assess. What tools and what forward thinking strategy should drivers have if a verbal or physical altercation happens on their vehicle? Well, the first thing they're assessing now, they've identified, okay, there's, there's something going on on the bus, there's something going on on the vehicle. I've got to assess how serious is it, right? Am I talking about two six-year-olds that are, you know, being snotty to each other? Or am I talking about two 12th graders that are standing up preparing to fight? Where am I at? Where's the vehicle at? Is it a rural road? Is it urban America? Am I able to pull off the shoulder? Uh, is there a parking lot? That's assessing. What are my capabilities? Do I need to let dispatch know? There's numerous issues here that we already know our drivers are really good at. And so assessing really is one of the things I believe that our drivers really have a great strength in already. Because you're gonna have to assess in a matter of seconds because it's going to be a matter of seconds before you have to manage the incident. And a lot of companies and drivers feel like they should never intervene. Is that good advice? You know, it's not good advice in the sense of you can't really tell someone they don't have a right to defend themselves. Every state in the United States of America has a self-defense clause for citizens, and it doesn't matter if you're working or at home. So for us to say to someone, by the way, don't touch these kids, which is very common in the pupil transportation industry, is really not a good idea because it leads parents to believe, we've told our drivers they can't touch your kids, but now your student is attacking another student or your student is attacking my driver. Well, the law supersedes that mandate. What we tell uh, our clients is, don't touch these kids, dot, 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 unless you have to. Right. And according to law. And there's the key. So moving to managing the situation, what tools should a driver have to respond to a physical or verbal altercation on the bus? So when you're talking about a situation of a fight, again, what's the age group? I've done the identify, I've done the assess, but now what am I gonna manage with? What's going to be the tool for the tool chest, right? Out of that tool chest, it says verbal conflict resolution. 
You know, what's your command presence like? Are you someone that has conflict resolution skills? Do you know how to resolve conflict? Do you know how to do it in an authoritative way? Do you know the three steps of intervention into a fight situation? All of those are tools that the driver must have or else we can't expect the driver to react any differently than they would if they were at home. Jesus, this information is very important, but what should a driver do if they're unclear on what their company's procedures are? You know, that's a great question, Todd. Uh, one of the issues is that a lot of employees really don't know what their policies, their procedures, or their protocols are. And it's important for people to understand, you know, policies are the written word. Mm -hmm. Protocols and procedures can be an understanding within the culture of the company, but the policy is what leads the company. And so one of the things is they need to go to their supervisor. They need to say, hey, what is our, our policy on this? What's our procedures? I mean, I don't recall ever being trained in this arena of personal safety planning, uh, which is not common right now, but it's becoming more common. You know, these trainings, the, the newest one, body language recognition, thinking outside the bus. We love that title. The drivers love that title because what we have found, the research shows that drivers are the safest mode of transportation in the United States of America when they're driving. But when are these incidents happening that we referred to earlier in this conversation? The Arkansas bus jacking, the Georgia bus jacking, the Alabama incident, they're happening when the buses are on layover, when the bus is stopped. So what we realize is drivers are dropping their guard. And what we want to encourage drivers to do is, hey, you've been really aware while you're driving. Why not be just as aware when you're on layover? And it sounds like your underlying message is sometimes the worst action is no action. Absolutely. People like to think fight or flight. You know, the amygdala, oh, you got to fight or flight. Well, the only challenge with that is there's one more F that people forget about, and you just said it, freeze. The freeze response is unacceptable. It means you're doing nothing. It means you were so overwhelmed with crisis. It means you've never thought about it, that it literally froze your body from taking action. And that's not acceptable in the crisis arena. You have to have a plan. If it's fight, then fight for your life. If it's uh, flee, then flee, right? With all your heart, get that bus stop like that casino operator, a motor coach operator did, and got those passengers off that bus. Running's a great option, right? Especially when the threat is lethal. But have a plan. And that's going to be the critical part to this. So that's why we're really excited about the opportunities uh, with protective insurance, because we believe we're going to be able to offer your clients that next level of best and forward thinking practices. Great. Thank you very much for Thank your you. time today, Jesus. It's a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Todd. This concludes our Safety Solutions video on customer care and passenger safety. For more safety and risk management resources, visit our website at protectiveinsurance.com and click on Loss Prevention and Safety Services. And remember, there's always time for safety.